Hey everybody, welcome back to Hair of the Dog TV. Today we are jumping into one of the generative AI tools in Photoshop. We're talking about that generative feel as it pertains to extending the background of your image, which can be really useful if somebody orders a canvas or if you want to extend an image to make a kind of a pano shot for a top of your website or for a myriad of other reasons. And it is really, really quick and Adobe has been doing a really great job. If you want more tips and tricks like this, go ahead and hit subscribe because we release a new video every week, but now let's get into it. So one of the first things we might want to use for is when we want to extend our canvas. Say you have this great image and you're like, oh man, I would really love to have this as the header for my website, but I need to have a lot more negative space on that left side so that, you know, the dog's looking over into it and I can have space to put, you know, my logo or some copy or something like that. So here we are in Photoshop. Um, one of the things we have is this generative toolbar that kind of follows you around. And as you select different things, it jumps to like wherever your mouse is and it's really annoying and really obtrusive. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna go ahead and pin that over here so that it doesn't follow me around. So, all right, the next thing we wanna do is we want to extend this. So we're gonna go to our crop tool and you can have an actual ratio if you want or if you want to just a, um, use that crop tool to kind of pull it out a little bit. You can also do that. Excuse me for a moment while my computer decides it can't handle the crop tool. There we go. Okay, good job, computer. This is a new one too. <laughs> All right, anyway, so since there's no ratio selected, we can just go ahead and pull this out however far we want to be. So maybe like right about here looks good. We're gonna go ahead and say yes, uh, click that for that crop tool. And now we need to be able to have something selected to have that generative fill come up. So let's go ahead and select that with our marquee tool. And you can see this changes to generative fill. We're gonna click generative fill. And if you just wanna fill in the space, you don't have to ask it to do anything. If you wanted to add a monkey and a giraffe over here, that's when you would type that. But since I just wanted to take the information in the image and make its best guess to extend it, I'm gonna hit generate. So it's going to take a second and then we'll see what it does. All right, so here we are. It's actually not too bad, except there's definitely a line there, but that should be easy to blend in with our old school normal healing tools. Um, but we always have three variations over here. So we can try these three different ones. Oh, I kind of like that one. This one's too dark. This one I kind of like. It's nice and, and bright and the the um, railings here, this was in front of a railing with um, some bougainvillea and stuff growing on it, stays nice and spaced out. And then we could just fix that with our other tools. So here's the thing, having these AI tools is not an excuse to not learn Photoshop because situations like this come up where you're like, oh, that's 95% perfect, but I've got to do something with that really obnoxious line. So you would need to know how to blend that in together. Um, but anyway, that's one good example. Let me show you one more example. Uh, maybe you have an image like this and you're just like, oh man, I just really wish there was just a little bit more room on the sides here of this dog. So we'll just go ahead. Actually, let's just make this a little bit more of a square crop and extend these sides. All right, perfect. So again, we use the crop tool to make our crop. We're going to hit yes, select, and then we're going to go ahead and grab the marquee tool. And we are just going to select this section, hit generative fill, generate, and it's going to think and add a little something here. Let's see what it does. All right. That is pretty darn perfect. Although this big rock is a little obnoxious. Let's see what other options they have. Oh, hello. That one is, um, Pretty perfect. Look how it even had the depth of field changing as it gets closer to the camera. Wow, I'm actually pretty impressed. Here's the crazy part. These tools are gonna continue to get better um, and better. <laughs> and it's kind of blowing my mind. Okay, that one doesn't look great, but let's see what else we have. <laughs> that one looks pretty perfect. And look, it even added a door. It made sense for what that roof was doing there. Um, yeah, that's a great job. So you can see you can choose these variations over here on the right um, and go with that. So I honestly don't see anything in that image other than maybe just a little bit of some cloning kind of issues right over here and a line right there. 
um, that we would have to deal with, maybe a little bit of a line right there. So you do need to pixel peep a bit and get into um, pretty close to kind of where especially the new image and the old image lined up to make sure that there's not telltale signs like that. But overall, this is a huge step in our workflow. Um, if somebody needs a canvas and you need to extend those images and wrap them around, or if you just need to like, you know, just change the aspect ratio of something a little bit, it works really, really well.